Jan started as a subscriber and is now a friend. You are going to be jealous of his swing and he also mayonnaises his driver like a bouse. But something is causing him to shoot between 80 and 83 most often. He wanted to figure out what's stopping him from shooting level par. So we played his home course using the Mulligan's Maketh the Man system, otherwise known as the Triple M system. We'll take Mulligan's where we think it would save us from a sure drop shot. Our goal is to remain around level par for the entire round and review where the mulligans were used. We want to use as few as possible. On the first hole, you can go at the green if you're warmed up, right over the trees, or lay it up to wedge distance toward the top of the dog leg. Jan plays the high percentage shot. It's high percentage because with the driver in hand, the temptation is to smash it near the green. It's the first hole and we haven't even hit any balls. If we hit a bad one, we're already in recovery mode. If we do hit a good one and we leave ourselves 60 yards to the hole, are we ready for the partial pitch shot? Do we even like the partial pitch shot? Jan chooses three wood and then a full wedge into the green. What a man. Okay, perfect. On hole two, a driver is the play here all day with his beautiful draw. It's a par five and the only danger is that big bunker on the right. If you're in the bunker, it most often turns the hole into a three shot par five. Great shot. Sure, that looks really good, huh? Oh. You're like 200 meters there. 200 meters there, it's like from here it's 230. 238 yards, so I'm assuming it's 225 yards there. Okay, what can you hit 225? You can hit my three wood, but I didn't bring it. I wasn't going to hit it. Now, three wood is going to be risky, eh? What do you want to have in? A wedge. So I then, seven, I think. yeah, seven and then leave a wedge in. In the bunker, he's weighing up his options, but from 225 yards, the only choice he has to hit the green in two shots is a three wood from the sand. This is not a high percentage shot. Yeah, the shot. downside is that 9 out of 10 times it performs worse than a mid iron. Playing for the 1 in 10 shot with the downside of 9 out of 10 being poofies is the opposite of the way of the player. He lays up with a 7 iron with the intention of having less than 100 yards into the green to attack with a wedge. Good shot. Oh. Yeah, that's perfect. I'm Jan was worried about going over the back of the green on this par 3. It's 198 yards to the hole, but behind the green is big trouble. We had a breeze into us, so it was probably playing about 205 yards. With his fear of what's over the back of the green, he chooses the 6 iron to stay short of the pin. He'll have an incredibly difficult bunker shot from 50 yards away, so we use one mulligan. We take the 4 iron on this one, and even with a poor strike, he's on the front edge. Well, players, we've had a fatal error there because the six iron is uh, well short and Jan has a, oh, that's a long bunker shot. Not the shot you want to leave yourself ever. I mean, you definitely want to take enough club to carry that bunker. So I had a five iron in here. I'm on the middle of the green there and he's now he's hit his bunker shot out. Really good shot. It's just, it's never going to be advantageous having a 55, 60 yard bunker shot in. So he's hit the four iron badly onto the front edge and I think he's going to have a much better chance from there. The drop shot came because of a small decision on the tee based on a fear from a previous round. Into a breeze from 190 yards on the third hole of the day, the four iron will always be a great play here. The six iron would be better if this were our 12th hole of the day when he is warmed up. These tiny mental slips can cost you a shot early on, but are easy to fix. If it happens to you and you miss club yourself, remember to not do that for the rest of the round. These nine holes are not long at 3,200 yards, and on this length par four, Jan is happy with the three wood to leave himself a short iron into the greens. 
With only 137 yards into the hole, Jan thinks his 9-iron is a good club, which it is. His stock shot is a baby draw. Sometimes we get it in our heads that we need to manufacture a shot. I know that because I do it a lot myself. On this shot, Jan thought he needed to hit a fade to remove a few yards from his standard distance. Short left of the green is a bunker. On the right hand side of the green is a flat ground with no sand. Hitting a fade here is unnecessary and the downside is ending up in a very deep bunker if it doesn't fade enough. Overcooking the fade would leave him just short, which is fine. His reliable baby draw works perfect into the green though. If he leaves it out right, he'll have a flat chip. If he tugs it a little bit with all the green behind the pin, he doesn't need to worry about hitting it up to 150 yards onto the back left of the green. We almost never have to manufacture a shot. Our standard shot works better almost every time. He hits the ball so well and chips so nicely. So far, the tiny things we can fix easily have cost us. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy players. Since we're one under par in our mulligan game, I don't want to use a mulligan. It was just a pulled shot off the tee, and even if it makes a bogey, we'll still be level par. His par 4 and par 5 tee game is always spot on when I play with him, so it's not really his main issue. Let's just take a moment's silence for how good it was to slice a pitching wedge from 120 yards from the sand and land it on the fringe. What a shot! We use a mulligan here and the only reason he smashed it so far past the hole is because the grain is growing away from him. Do you see how the grass is a dark color? That means from this angle, the grass is growing into us. From his angle, the grass is a shiny or whiter color because the grass grows away from him. On tropical grass like this, hitting down grain will add a lot of speed to the putt, which he didn't read correctly. It's just a conscious issue to always look at all the factors affecting your putt. I notice when playing with professionals, they are hyper-focused on putting and give a lot of consideration. Wow. Again, this is just a small mental error from our man. And it's so easy to remember this fix and when playing more consciously. Jan is in the ideal position with only 112 yards into a decent length par 4. Whenever we have a wedge in our hands, we want to get it on the green, regardless of handicap. Inside wedge distance is where we can all shave strokes to get us to the next level. For anyone trying to scratch, the game inside 120 will be of prime importance. Of course, this is only one shot and we take a mulligan green side instead of in the fairway. We get up and down for par on the second attempt, but let's rather assign this mulligan to the wedge shot. If he hits the green from the approach shot, he has a putt for birdie. How many times have you hit a bucket of wedges at the driving range? Better contact, huh? This ball is way better. Jan hit another ball which finished in line with the pin on the right side as well. We'll take the first ball and keep it in mind that it was similar error, we leaked it to the right.
He knows he can't get home in two shots, so he calmly lays up to wedge distance like a supreme bouse. Jan is 90 yards out. He left himself the shot he wanted. It's a bit of a difficult, difficult green. It runs sideways to us here. Not really panty line of shape. It's more like a mitt, a mitt shape. You know, when you're cold and you wear a mitten or mitt. Yeah, he comes from 90, probably with a 52, 56 degree. I could die. I'm in the firing line. Nope, he's hit that well. Back of the green. A little bit of zip right there. A little tour spin right there for the Jan Meister. After nine holes, we can say his drop shots are down to mental errors on par threes. One straight putt and one wedge shot inside 120 yards. Good shot. Jeez, what a big man. I mean, the thing is that you've got the branch, but you're not going to hit it. I know, no, I won't. But you've got that tree there, so you... Yeah, I need to hit it yeah, underneath but, this branch. Yeah. But we want to avoid the bunker, but I mean, you've got that little no, draw, no, no, so a little draw on the pin is great. Just like that, baby. What a shot. Dude, it's never over. You better listen to your caddy, bro. Wait, wait, before you hit, bro, what's the plan? What, what do you see happening? I aim to the left of the pin. Left of the pin? Um, you see the left edge of the green, yeah. of the bunker. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hitting that for a fade. For a fade, okay. And the wind's... On this par three, he wants to hit a fade, which he can do. It looked like the club face was set too far to the right on the first shot, so we used a mulligan here. This one is easily fixed by adjusting his alignment. You can't see it easily because of the camera angle, but the first shot was definitely set up too far to the right. Once again, this is merely a fancy shot issue on a par 3. He definitely has the ability to hit a fade and shape it, if he wants to. But did he have to? This is always the question I want to know. Did I have to hit a shot less reliable than my standard shot? Would my standard shot still work in this situation, honestly? Can we hit our standard shot just not directly at the pin? Maybe we can aim elsewhere and just get it on the green. Oh, you long like me, player. What a man. So it was just alignment. Okay, 38 yards, 58 degree. There's his second ball where he was aligned correctly. Can't see him now under the surface and he's hit a cracker. Cracker of a shot. Ah, spins too much. He's the spin master. Oh, man. What a putt. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look how, look how it goes, eh? Yeah. Okay, that's a par. Yep. It's a nice strike that, huh? And right at the center. Right in the panty. What a player! You are the best. Dude, You're the king of the you king the, of lip you, you are the curse. No, no. <laughs> I'm the good luck, bro. You're a strong, independent woman. Ah, oh, nothing wrong with that, though. Should be about 130 yards into, into the green, eh? This is a very tough green to hit. It's sloped in all the wrong ways, and the cross breeze is pushing the ball away from the hole. Jan misses it in the right place, so it's a simple up and down. While we are picking apart what's going wrong, don't discount how good Jan is. He is a mindful golfer and you can see it here. 
He notices that they water the greens when he sees a lot of surface moisture. He lofts it a bit closer, knowing the ball will stop quickly. Brilliant. Oh, that's going to be okay. Nah, you... That's fine. That's too long. Not too long. I'm in the middle of the green, baby. Okay. That's just club selection, and that was perfect. Yep. That oh, was man, I'm getting it so fast. It's not so. <laughs> it's not so slow. Yes, baby. Oh, what a shot! Oh yes. Oh, and he's gone. Bye. Stay short, stay short, okay. stay short. Yeah, fine. Let's try another one. Okay. Yes, man, good part. Oh, baby! Get in the hole! Was it short? I don't know, but that was such a good shot, dude. I think it may be a little short. Yeah, I think the wind is quite strong. Yeah. I think it's down grain, bro. Get up! Good shot! Man, you're a big boy. Our man takes four shots to get up and down from 109 yards, and I understand we can't be perfectionists in golf, but we are looking at where the surplus shots are accumulating. Inside 120 yards, we always want to be up and down in less than three to attain the next level. He plays this hole like a fiddle, but the lag putt was a tough one. The pin was located on a slope or a dome, and to get it close was tough. The, the three putt is something else a scratch player very rarely does. It's just a simple fix though. This round proved just what a fine line it is between being a single digit handicapper and being a scratch golfer. A decision here, aiming there, and a few shots inside 120 yards, which includes around the greens. Half of the shots Jean dropped today came from par threes. Each par three was a bogey, which is strange because he is fine with his approach shots from the fairway. The first par three was a club selection issue, which left the ball short right of the green. The next par three was also short and to the right in the bunker. The third par three was short and right in the bunker due to the alignment for a fade. The final par three was a club selection where we finish short of the hole again. The pattern is simple to pick up. Jan can use his standard shot shape and forget the fear of the back edge. Let's embrace the back edge and hit it there.
No fancy shape, no manufacturing, just his standard shot shape. How many of us should be doing this? A lot of us, I guarantee. We can also say that the other four shots were lost due to the game inside 120 yards and decision making. That should always be the focus of most golfers, but more especially golfers looking to get to low single figure golf. When we make better decisions and commit to the shot 100%, we move to another level. This is the mental part of the game we need to be conscious of. It's the biggest part of the mental game. Better decision making always makes better scores. Removing clutter from our game like manufactured fades and draws when we don't absolutely need them and then using the right club is a key step. For Jan and anyone looking to reduce their handicap, it's vital to spend two hours on the short game for every hour on the driving range. His tee ball is so good. Of course, we could say he should sharpen his irons a little, which we can all do, but the low hanging fruit is the chipping, putting, pitching, sand shots, and his wedges between 30 and 120 yards. That's going to ripen really fast like a fat juicy fig ready for smashing. Since this round, he has shot two rounds of 75, which is very close to scratch golf when you factor in stroke rating, slope rating, and all the handicap system jazz. Before you go, here's an easy tip to reduce your handicap. Play one course for 30 straight rounds. Life changed.